If you've ever felt like you hit rock bottom, like you were in a situation that there was absolutely no way out of, even if you were to give your best effort, there'd be nothing you could do. Like your back was really against the wall, like this is the end. Well, whatever situation you're in right now, I wanna tell you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. In 2015, I ended up filing for bankruptcy. I was over $80,000 in debt, and I had to flee the country to Medellin, Colombia to start my life over. No, this is not a narco story. This is a story of what happens when you find out what you want to do with your life and you pursue it and you fail. So if you've ever felt like you've really wanted something in your life, but you failed and you felt like giving up, then this video is for you. Now, this is not only a story about failure, but it's also a good old fashioned American comeback story. Because in present day, I truly am doing what I love. I'm a full-time men's performance coach. I get to work with pro athletes like a Cy Young award-winning pitcher, a UFC champion. But I gotta tell you about this massive detour I took down in Medellin, Colombia. Because I think there's a lot that can be learned from my story of trying to pursue my passion and all the pitfalls that I fell into along the way. Truly, if you're trying to figure out what your thing is in life, or if you have figured it out, but now you wanna make money from it, take some notes, because I'm gonna save you a lot of time, money, and energy. So let's start from the beginning. Where did my passion come from? Why was I interested in training the minds of athletes and high achievers? When I was 18 years old, I was playing college football, and thanks to my sensei at the time, I discovered that my physical performance could be dramatically improved through my mental skills training. We worked on everything from working my body's energy system, to shifting my brainwave frequencies, to different types of meditation and vision visualization. And as a college football player, this took me from riding the bench to being a starter and finding a lot of success. Not only that, but I use the same skills to help my teammates as well. Ever since I had the success in my own life and I started to help other people, I've had this insatiable appetite to help others who are trying to achieve greatness. So right after I graduated college, this led me to reconnecting to a dude who I went to high school with. This guy just graduated playing division one basketball and he was looking for some extra support as he pursued his dream of playing overseas. This dude was also a bit of a business savant. This was 2012 and he had already launched a mobile app company. When he experienced my meditation techniques, he had this aha moment that I could take these same techniques and reach a broader audience by turning them into mobile apps. Immediately in my mind's eye, I started to have these visions of flying in private jets with my millions of dollars, and I believed that my new business partner was gonna be the one to take me to the promised land. So I had some capital invest in our first app from a research grant I had received while conducting a study on meditation in college, and so we were off to the races. Within a few months, we developed the first app that helped with relaxation and stress reduction and believe it or not, we actually started to make some money. It wasn't enough to make a living from, so I did odd jobs throughout my city to make ends meet. I was doing some marketing for a chiropractor, I was finding mental performance coaching clients to pay me $20 here and there for sessions, and I was stretching out my food stamps by shopping at discount grocery stores. The small profit we did make from the meditation apps was reinvested into making new apps. We were doing this thing called reskinning apps, where we took the same code for the app and used it to make more apps by swapping out the designs and meditations. Since I could help anyone with anything, I made meditation apps for everything you can imagine, from playing basketball, to reducing anxiety, to sleeping, to quitting drugs, to public speaking, to getting on planes and traveling without a fear of flying. And no, I was not coding these apps myself. Uh, we hired app developers from India to do this and they were extremely cheap, so they got the job done, although it was a complete pain in the ass to work with them. Anyone who's worked with super cheap developers overseas knows that they're gonna tell you exactly what you wanna hear and they're gonna do whatever they want regardless of the situation. This is where I learned for the first time that you do get what you pay for. So after a year or so, we started to make a few thousand dollars every month and we decided to leave our small hometown in search of a bigger and more expansive city. We moved to Austin, Texas, and this is where my money problems really began. We were only making around $4,000 a month and we split that 50-50, but my naive optimism led me to believe that we could start making more money soon. So I got a studio apartment that cost me $1,600 a month and if you can do the math, that was not going to work out well for me considering my income was less than $2,000 a month. You see, my business partner's personal app companies were going so well, they were netting him tens of thousands of dollars a month in profit every month. So this led me to believe that it was only a matter of time before our company would start to catch up. We kept reskinning new apps, but the profit was not increasing. I was spending all my time talking to developers in India, doing keyword research to try and get our apps more eyeballs. And after a year in Austin, my credit card bills were piling up and we were not making much more money. At most, we were doing four to $7,000 a month. 
Remember, split 50-50. I never knew any entrepreneurs or business owners growing up, so I really just didn't have any perspective on what I should or shouldn't be doing. I just saw my business partner's exponential success and assumed I just needed to work more and work harder to get to where he was. This led me down a path of doubling down on what wasn't working for me. We developed even more apps and I started creating new moonshot businesses that I hoped would give me the financial freedom I desired. So I could eventually, hopefully, go back to doing my mental performance coaching. I'm sad to say by the end of year two in Austin, I had started a real estate assistant business. This is only losing me money. I started a new mobile app company designed to rank videos on what was best, like best dunk, best skateboard trick, and this never got off the ground. I started a mobile app like Tinder but for connecting the talent world, actors, models, photographers, and this never got published either. Finally, I'd started to try and get my coaching business off the ground again, but I wasn't picky about the type of coaching I was doing. I was doing everything from physical personal training to writing nutrition plans for people. This is where it gets really bad. Even though I wasn't really making more money, I decided to upgrade my apartment, and now I started renting a $2,300 a month apartment, and literally every month I was just piling up credit card debt until it got to a point of no return where I realized that I needed to abort the mission, hit the reset button on my life, and start over. I had to run up tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt and had thousands more in student loans. In total, I was in over $80,000 of debt and I needed to find an exit plan ASAP. Luckily, I had met some dudes who'd recently been down to Medellin, Colombia. They were telling me how cheap and amazing it was there, perfect weather, low cost of living, an opportunity to learn Spanish, and of course, Colombian women. Sold. The only thing left was making my exit plan. First thing I needed was to consolidate my debt so I could begin to dig myself out. I found this company that basically bought my debt and would negotiate with the credit card companies on my behalf. They consolidated my tens of thousands of dollars of credit card debt and turned this into a $1,000 a month payment that I'd be paying off for the next few years. Next, I need some capital to start making these debt payments while still having enough money for rent and food. So my business partner bought my equity stake from me for $20,000 paid out over four months. Even though the company was doing fifty dollars to $60,000 a year at that time, I was desperate and this was all he would offer me, so I took the money and I ran. So the most painful lesson that I had to learn here that probably seems like common sense to you is don't spend more money than you make. My business partner had started a wildly successful company with a $10,000 loan, and this was the only business example I had, so I believed that getting into debt to start a new business was normal. For me, it wasn't a smart move, and since that day, I've never done that again. Next, I shut down all my other businesses and vowed to focus on just one thing moving forward. At the time, I was pouring energy into five different businesses and it was only getting me into more financial trouble. This was during a time of entrepreneurial boom in Austin, Texas, where a lot of people were deliriously pursuing businesses destined to fail. So nobody really batted an eye with my attempt to start five businesses at the same time. Finally, I sold off everything in my apartment, I threw out everything not worth selling, and I sublet my apartment to a company who would take over my monthly lease payment. I booked a one-way ticket to a country I'd never even visited before to go start my new life. Upon arriving in Medellin, Colombia, I was smacked in the face with the reality that I could no longer rely on credit cards to survive. I had to get real about money and face my situation for what it was. I quickly ran through that $20,000 and I had no new money coming in and I had a big debt payment to make every month. Around this time is where I hit rock bottom. I had met a Colombian girl that I had fallen completely in love with, but I was full of shame and guilt because I knew I couldn't provide for her and I was keeping the reality of how bad my situation was from her. This all came to a head one day when she wanted me to buy her a bagel and a hot chocolate and I literally only had money on my debit card to buy one of those two things that she wanted. This ended up becoming an unnecessary huge fight because I was super self-conscious and ashamed of how poor I was. Instead of letting her see me this way, I made it about her wanting to buy too much stuff. She was so confused about why I was freaking out about her wanting to buy a bagel. And all I can remember was just this sinking feeling in my stomach, just thinking to myself, is there ever gonna be a time where I get out of this situation? I was in a constant fight or flight state where I'd wake up first thing in the morning with adrenaline pumping through my veins and this feeling of desperation in my solar plexus. This eventually got so bad that I was in such a deep depression that I felt like there had to be something physically wrong with me. And it turns out all the stress I put on my body had led to me giving myself a thyroid disorder. One day, sitting in my apartment, wallowing in my shit pit of shame, guilt, and fear, I realized that I got into this place of failure by abandoning all my mental techniques 
and asking everyone else what I should be doing. Should I start a new company? Should I get funding? Should I pursue this new idea? Should I use this new technology? Should I hire this coach? Should I go to this seminar? Everything other people had told me to do had gotten me into the place that I was right now, in a big pile of shit. It was time to stop asking other people what I needed to do and stop suppressing the part of myself that knew all along what I should have been doing. I decided then and there, I was gonna go back to my mental performance coaching and I was gonna be my first and best client. Immediately, I started employing the techniques I'd set aside. I started journaling for catharsis and getting all the negative thoughts out of my head. I started visualizing the success I wanted to create so I could improve my emotional frequency and be in a more resourceful emotional state. I started systematically reprogramming my mind by removing the negative thought patterns that had been making me feel hopeless. I started asking myself better questions like, if I could get out of this debt, how would I do it? If I could make my first dollar, how would I make it? I created a system for success in my life that allowed me to track my progress and see what was working and what wasn't. I expanded my mental coaching beyond myself and started working with clients once again. After six months, I was actually doing okay. I was living off of cash and I was also successfully making my debt payments. I wasn't making extra money, but I was getting by. I was paying for my food, I was paying for my rent, I was surviving. At this point, I had this idea to combine forces with my buddy who I met back in Austin, Texas. We had ran some joint workouts together there where he would lead the physical portion and I I would lead the mental emotional portion and we had kind of captured lightning in a bottle. He decided to meet me down in Medellin to try and recapture some of that magic we tapped into that previous year. Our plan was to launch a YouTube channel combining his passion of jumping rope and my passion for mental training. The first nine months were a struggle. We were making tons of videos and no one seemed to care about what we were uploading to the internet. Regardless though, I had learned from my past and I wasn't going to start something new. I knew that my number one tip that I give to my clients is that there's power in singular focus. And so I took my own medicine. I sat in the tension of the not working until we experienced a breakthrough. A buddy of mine had released a course on SEO he gave me access to. And through this, I realized that the same principles that applied to Google also applied to YouTube. If I started to answer questions that people were asking on YouTube, then I would get their views. Aha! If you start to type in a search phrase into the YouTube search bar, it will literally finish your sentence and tell you what to make. So that's what I did. And the more I did this, the more it made sense to just answer questions about Jump Pro Fitness because no one had done it before. So there really was little competition and a lot of opportunity. Within weeks of implementing this strategy, we started to see our videos take off and our views skyrocketed. Within the next six months, we went from 1,000 to 50,000 YouTube subscribers and we're finally getting enough traction to sell group coaching and online programs. I was now easily paying my bills and even making some extra money to pocket. So for the first time in over four years, my bank account stopped slipping into the negative and I stopped receiving those goddamn emails notifying me about how I have insufficient funds in my bank account. Living in Medellin turned out to be the perfect place to escape to because I didn't have anyone to turn to besides myself. I was forced to look inward, face my shortcomings, and recapture my passion for mental performance. I moved back to the United States about three years after initially moving to Medellin, Colombia, and shortly thereafter, I made my last debt payment. Finally, I was free. We eventually surpassed a million subscribers on YouTube, over 100 million views, and built a business that made over a million dollars a year. Oh yeah, and that girl who had the audacity to ask me for both a bagel and a hot chocolate is now my wife and the mother of my two children. Just goes to show you, when you take a leap into the unknown, there are all these hidden benefits that you never even could have imagined if you didn't just go for it. After seven years of working on the YouTube channel with my buddy, I let him buy me out for my equity in the company, and I fully transitioned back into being a full-time mental performance coach. I now work with some of the most prominent athletes in the world, ranging from the NFL to the MLB to the NHL to professional golf, professional racing, boxing, the UFC, all kinds of pro sports. I also work with some of the most renowned business owners in the world and some of their businesses, ranging from Vayner Sports to Vayner Media. Present day, I live near Miami, Florida, but I kept my roots in Colombia by buying some land and building a home in the countryside there. I go back pretty often, I get my nature fix, and connect with a place that gave me the opportunity to restart my life to become the man that I am today. I hope that my story has inspired you, and if it has, you can hear the whole story and actually get the same playbook that I give to my mental performance coaching clients by grabbing my book. It's called Program to Fail. It's available now on Amazon. Check it out, and if this video was helpful for you, if it was inspiring to you, please give the video a like, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe to the YouTube channel.